The huge and continuing problem of dealing with acid mine drainage and the damage it causes to the environment in West Virginia has been well documented. Standard treatments involve introducing alkalinity to neutralize the acid, but doing so causes metal in the solution to precipitate out. What to do with the resulting tons and tons of sludge is a difficult proposition, but a group of researchers may have come up with a creative and potentially profitable way around it. The DEP's Jake Glantz joins us now with more. Greg, a team of scientists from WVU's Water Research Institute is partnering with the DEP to take what has been an expensive to handle waste product and extract something almost as valuable as gold. Alchemy. It's the medieval forerunner to chemistry that was concerned primarily with attempting to turn base metals, like lead, into gold. While those efforts were not successful, there's something similar going on inside this unassuming brick building outside Morgantown. Only this time, it's not gold they're looking for. They're called rare earth elements, a group of elements on the periodic table Scandium, yttrium, and these guys, elements 57 to 71, the lanthanides. Despite their name, rare earth elements are widely distributed in the rocks of the earth, just rarely concentrated enough to get a commercially viable deposit. As a result, the uh, <clears throat> supplies are limited to relatively few locations on earth, and the global market is controlled by relatively few mining operations. Uh, China controls about 95% of the imports of rare earth elements to the United States. So, what makes these rare earth elements so important? Dr. Zimkevich explains. Well, they're important because they have some really, really good uh, properties as alloys, uh, parts of uh, alloys with metals, uh, ceramics, uh, magnets. They make some very, very powerful but small and light magnets. For example, in a lot of high-tech applications, um, your cell phone has a magnet that has rare earth elements in it in order to create the, the, the vibration. So, <clears throat> and, and a lot of these have, have really important defense applications, like scandium, for example, is one of the rare earths. Uh, scandium is used to alloy with aluminum. It creates a very light uh, uh, aluminum alloy. It's not only used in uh, baseball bats, your aluminum baseball bats have some scandium in them, but also high-performance jet aircraft, the F-35, for instance. They're also in things like computer memory chips, electronic displays, rechargeable batteries, night vision goggles, and the generators inside giant wind turbines. And the worldwide demand for them keeps growing. Our some rare earths are worth a fabulous amount of money. Scandium, the example I just gave you is, I think the market value is about $16,000 per kilogram. That's two and a half pounds, 2.2 pounds. Uh, others are worth $8 per kilogram. So they're not all equally valuable. So what we pay a lot of attention to is the distribution of the valuable rare earths and the non-valuable rare earths. And so you don't want to spend all your time extracting stuff that is basically a bulk commodity on the world market and not in short supply. And that's what makes this pilot project in West Virginia so interesting and potentially beneficial. And that's where the DEP comes in. Uh, DEP was approached by the Water Research Institute back in 2015 uh, as a cost share for this uh, the rare earth element extraction process. Uh, we've contributed a certain amount of monies and uh, in-kind services. Uh, they've also asked for sites where they can collect some of the sludge and being that the Office of Special Reclamation is probably the largest producer of sludge in the state, uh, we provided them with some good, uh, good sites for them to collect their samples. Like this one. The DEP operates a treatment plant here at the former Omega Deep Mine site to handle the acid mine drainage that continues to leak from the abandoned works. The acid mine drainage leaches the rare earth elements from the shales found in and around the coal seams. It turns out that the, the source that we're looking at here, the acid mine drainage source, has, actually has a very high concentration of the more valuable rare earths, the critical rare earth uh, elements and also the heavy rare earth elements. Those are the ones that uh, command the, the greatest price. Uh, overall, and we've looked at hundreds of samples of sludges across uh, the, the, the tri-state area in Maryland, Ohio, Pennsylvania, you know, West Virginia, 
And on average, our, our rare earth ratio of heavy rare earths and criticals to total rare earth concentration is something like 50%. So that's a really good average. The, the mines, the biggest mine, in, I think, in the world, but it's in China, it's, uh, the Bayanobo mine, has a rare earth, uh, a heavy to total rare earth ratio of about 12% as opposed to 50. So the, the fact that we have this enrichment of the, the more valuable rare earths makes this a really important source. Finding a commercially viable method to extract those rare earth elements from acid mine drainage could turn what is now a financial liability into an asset. Here at the Omega site, operation and maintenance costs to run the treatment facility average between ninety and a hundred thousand dollars a year. The treating the water is probably the easy part. The cost with this treatment process comes back to the sludge. What do you do with the sludge? How do you handle the sludge? Really drives the cost of the treatment process. Sludge management is a huge expense for when you're treating acid mine drainage. So if we can find a beneficial use of this byproduct of uh, the, the treatment process, it would be a, a tremendous savings to the state. Here at the Omega site, the treatment process involves adding hydrated lime to the acid mine drainage, which forms a slurry. The water flows through a clarifier that allows the heavier particulates and sludge to settle to the bottom. The clear water flows off for additional treatment, and the sludge is pumped up the hill into what are called geotubes. Geotube is uh, nothing other than and, uh, basically a large perforated tube. And we actually use these pumps here, and we add a uh, polymer to those. Polymer's like a magnet, so it's got a, a specific charge. The sludge has got a specific charge, and it draws the, the solids together to make what we call a flock. That flock is then pumped into the geotubes, and then what happens is the pores lets the clean water come out, and it holds the solid in. And over a period of time, that solid staying in that tube will dry. The tube's actually black, so whenever you have sunlight, especially even in the wintertime, it'll still draw heat and help remove that moisture. Right now, the geotubes are being used as part of the reclamation work at the site as backfill for a high wall, but one day, they could represent money in the bank. Uh, a single geotube from this property, we've analyzed this sludge uh, quite a number of times, and the, the, a single geotube has about $11,000 worth of rare earths in it, for example. And I think the number of geotubes up there right now gives you a total value sitting up on the, uh, uh, on the property of about $175,000 worth of rare earths right there. So it's, it's, it's not a king's ransom. But nevertheless, it's a, it's a way of offsetting the cost of AMD treatment that is going to be valuable. And it also uh, incentivizes um, someone taking that stuff and doing something with it other than just piling it up. And there are tons and tons and tons of the stuff piled up all over Appalachia. This particular mine has a sludge that's worth, that has maybe uh, 400 grams per ton of rare earth element in it. And that matches uh, some of the uh, biggest deposits in the world right now, those kind of concentrations. And so it's, we, we consider that commercially attractive. WVU recently received $2.7 million from the U.S. Department of Energy to begin a second phase of the project, to build and operate a pilot plant to extract the rare earth elements from the acid mine drainage sludge. If successful, and the technology can be expanded to an industrial scale, it could be a game changer for the region. Well, as a source, this is really attractive because you have infrastructure. Now, this is a good example. You've got a, a, a rare earth reserve right here, uh, what, six miles from Morgantown, West Virginia. It's on a paved road. It's got power right to the site. <laughs> and you know, it doesn't take much in order to get a, 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 a process installed here that can do some of the basic extraction, or at least haul it off to an extraction site. Most of the rare earth uh, mines that are under consideration in the United States or Canada are in the wilderness somewhere. So you have to build a road for maybe 100 miles. Uh, you have to build a power line in, or, or put a power station in to the wilderness somewhere. So in terms of infrastructure already in place, a workforce that's already here, a trained workforce that frankly is looking for opportunities for economic development and, and putting food on the table, you've got it right here. 
Dr. Zimkevich says based on some early estimates, there is a potential for this developed industry to generate somewhere between $400 million and $1.2 billion of economic activity per year in the central and northern Appalachian Basin. For Environment Matters, I'm Jake Glantz. Thanks, Jake. The current enrichment process for rare earth elements uses something called heat bleaching. It takes low-grade ore and uses a chemical process to extract and concentrate the valuable elements contained within it. Dr. Zemkavich says, in a sense, just about every mine in Appalachia is a natural heat bleach. 